Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to return to Germany, and this is the final one in my sort of mini series of German Brauhaus beers that I brought back from my little trip. So, once again, we are going to go to Wolfsburg in Lower Saxony and have a taste of another beer from Brauhaus Fallersleben. And this guy is the Alt Beer, which was their seasonal beer, I believe, for April. This is a kind of um, sort of more hoppy Dunkel beer, if you like. It's a top for fermented one, a kind of traditional German style, and I've never tried this one, so it should be a really nice review to do for you today. As I told you in my last video, this is actually my favourite Brauhaus that I've come across in Germany, and it's, it's, I don't know why, it just such struck such a nice chord, such a nice building, such good food, and a huge variety of different beer styles, so if you find yourself in Wolfsburg, do go and check it out. But as is usual with my beer reviews then, I will take you through a very brief history of the brewery. As I say, it's one of my favourites, so I hope you'll stick with me for it, but if you do want to get straight to the taste, Thing. Just fast forward, the brewery website's in the description for you below. It's available in the original German and also in a Google translated version of the English, which is fairly accurate. It's not the best though, but if you do want to go fast forward, just do it and please check out the link to my other review that I've done from these guys before. And as I said previously, I will make the effort to go back to Wolfsburg and get more beers from these guys at some point in the fairly near future. So anyway, the brewery, as I told you, is located in Wolfsburg in Lower Saxony in Germany, which is known for being the home of the Volkswagen car factory and the town itself has a population of 122,000 but it was built largely to house the workers of the Volkswagen complex so it's not the most traditional German town if you like it is a kind of uh, more modern thing and it's 1970s ish kind of style but it's actually what is quite funny about this this Volkswagen complex if you like is the sheer size of it it's about the same size as Gibraltar so it's the same size as a micro state and the engineering when you go and visit this place is just unreal all of the technology that's gone in to create this huge complex and they apparently produce about 6,000 cars a day so you can imagine the scale of things going on there it's a really impressive thing and it's a kind of pinnacle of German engineering if you like but the Altostad in Wolfsburg really is the main tourist attraction to the town so do go and check it out and the VFL uh, Wolfsburg Stadium is actually right next door to it and Volkswagen of course are the team sponsors but anyway if you drive about two or three miles away from the industrial centre of the town you'll come to the Fallersleben district of Wolfsburg and this brewery Brauhaus Fallersleben was constructed in 1765 by the local people to serve the Fallersleben castle now in Lower Saxony in the 18th century the brewing and distilling industry was actually really thriving and as you'll know if you're into Belgian beer French beer German beer or whatever, most of the monasteries and castles and things did have a brewery or a distillery that would be served uh, that would serve their castle or their monastery so they could serve beer to their guests and the locals and things so quite a cool kind of little piece of European history there but the building of this brewery as I told you in my last review is very interesting you can actually see it on the label here so I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little look at this while I'm describing it to you so as I told you before it's a very very interesting building when you first walk up to it it just looks like it's a converted barn it actually has this huge huge big four-story garner roof on this thing and it's it is unreal you've got these Dorner windows that stick outside of it and I think you can just see it on the video there there's these little slits in the roof and the roof used to essentially be the granary where they would treat the malt that was going to be used in the beer and the various spirits that they used to do so this used to just let the air in and air out all the malt and things but this roof really is incredible and you walk up to this thing and it is almost vertical so it's unreal but underneath you've got a two-story bar and brew pub and things and it is one of the best that I've seen in Germany. It's probably my favourite one actually. The beer garden at the back is beautiful. There's some nice fountains and things and it's just very peaceful. You would never believe that in this kind of leafy suburb you're actually only two or three miles away from the biggest car producing factory in the world. It, it really is kind of unreal and it's as I say, my favourite brew pub that I've ever come across in Germany. But the thing that was also really good about this brew pub was that they have a really, really good range of food. And this is probably actually the best selection of beers that I've come across from a German brow house. Most of them only have like three regular ones and then a seasonal beer, but these guys actually had loads of them. Just to list their, uh, their, their, their range for you. 
They had the Father's Leave in Schlossbrau in the regular range, which is a Pils beer. The Burger, Burgermeister Boy, which was the one I reviewed for you before, their Dunkel. Anno 1765, which is a Hellish beer. They've got Father's Leave in Hefeweizen, and there's four versions of this. There's the Alcohol version, Alcohol Fry, and then there's two other Alcohol Fries. One that is an Apfel beer, Apples, and they also have the Elderflower one, which is meant to be quite nice, actually. I think my dad tried that one. But they have a Rote beer as well, which I tried. Really nice red beer, obviously. Apfel beer, Apple beer and also Brauhaus Lemon which I think was their Radler beer but in, if you translate that into English I guess you would say it's a Shandy beer but the Germans always use the term Radler but they also have various seasonal beers as well and a new one every month this was the seasonal beer for April I believe the Alp beer but they've got various other ones I've seen there was an, a strawberry beer, uh, a cherry beer strawberry beer was going to be the June seasonal cherry beer was the July but they've got various Alp beers, Dunkelweizens Box, whatever you think of they do have it in their seasonal range but they have these beers available in various forms you can get the half litre bottles like this one a one litre growler two litre growler and you can also get five ten twenty 30 and 50 litre barrels of these beer if you have an event so the beer is very very good so like I say I really would recommend that you check out this Brauhaus and it is my favourite one I've come across in Germany so far so I hope as a, a humble beer reviewer on YouTube you will take my word on that that it really is worth checking out so just to tell you about the style of this beer that's your history of the brewery this guy is a 5% out beer and the out beer style isn't a very common one for non-Germans to drink if you like so this, this style of beer originates in Vest Failure. Dusseldorf in particular is very well known for this beer but it's also famous in Krefeld and Mönchengladbach also. So it's called out beer because it uses a top fermentation which is an older technique than the bottom fermentation that they use for the, the lager beers. Usually um, usually these bottom fermented beers are a bit more crisp and things whereas this is a more um, kind of fuller flavour if that makes sense but the first brewery to actually use the name Altbeer was the Schumacher Brewery from Dusseldorf and this was coined in the year 1838 so that's just a little history of the style for you but it's a 5% Altbeer I'll just let you have a little quick look at the label again as you can see nicely presented quite plain you can't really see it too well because of the light but that is the Brauhaus on there so it looks very nice just a plain kind of pop top on this so without further ado let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting here. Just get the sticker off this guy if I can open it up and there we are. So we'll get this guy out, you can see there was a nice kind of smoky opening there and we'll just get it out and into the glass. So as I said to you at the start, from what I've read of the Alp beers, usually it is a little bit more of a kind of hoppier version of a Dunkel beer. You've got the same kind of typical malt base if you like. Oh, the head's kind of building on that quite nicely. The Germans will never drink a beer, by the way, if it doesn't have a head on it. They'll actually send it back. So it's quite good that this has just built up a little bit of a head there. But you can actually smell the fruit off this as you pour it. That's another characteristic of the Alp beer, is that it does have a little bit of a reddish fruit flavour. But as you can see with this beer, it's poured a nice kind of dark sort of mahogany colour. I'll just bring up the light and let you see that properly. You can see it's a nice kind of dark mahogany colour. It's a little bit redder than it's appearing on the video. If I put my fingers behind it you can see it is hazy and there was about a half finger of a frothy kind of creamy coloured head there and that's going to just fade away to be a very thin foamy layer I think. So it hasn't poured as well as some Germans might like their beer but I'll just put that back down. In terms of the carbonation that's coming on this one there are some big bubbles just sticking towards the bottom of the glass but not too much visible. That was the same with the Burgermeister brow right enough Burgermeister Broy, sorry, I need to get my German pronunciation right. But yeah, it looks very, very nice. So let's have a look at the aroma on this guy. You can smell quite a bit of fruit coming off this one, actually. Exactly what fruit it is, I'm not too sure. It's quite interesting. It definitely has what you would expect, though, from the kind of out beer style. You've got a kind of big bready malt base in there but there's a little bit of cereal just on top of that and it's slightly toasty, there's a little bit of honey but there's a good bit of kind of grassy and floral hop aroma coming out of this too and there is a wee bit of earthy character but there's an unusual sort of fruitiness to it it's... I don't even know how to really describe that type of fruit that's coming out of this one it's not like anything I've ever smelt before it's almost a little bit like a kind of slightly 
apple-y fruit, if that makes sense. It's not like in the same apple in the same sense as a cider is, but it is just a little bit sort of apple-ish, but it almost smells as if it has just a little teeny bit of kind of banana-ish or something in there. And I've read with the alt beer you do tend to get a little bit of a yeasty flavour, so perhaps it is a kind of banana apple-y note that you're getting out of this one. But you can definitely smell the nice cereal and slightly caramelly notes under this as well. It's a nice big cereally kind of rye-ish bread aroma that you're getting out of this. As your nose adjusts to it, the fruit actually becomes a little bit, it subsides a little bit and you get more of the cereally rye bread flavours. A little bit of honey, but a bit, good bit of grassy and floral hop coming off of it too. And there is just a little bit of that unusual fruitiness. But without further ado, let's get cracking into this beer and we'll see what it's like. So this is the seasonal alt beer from Brauhaus Fahrersleben in Wolfsburg, Lower Saxony, Germany. Prost! Now that's really nice actually. So you've got a nice rye bready malt base as I said and that just blankets the middle of the tongue. It's, it's a very smooth beer and that's I noticed that with the last with the last beer from Fahler's Leben that it's very very smooth and that's typical of the German Brauhaus beers but you've got a nice big kind of rye bready malt base in this one. There is I think just a little bit of sweeter yeast that kind of sits there in the middle of the tongue but the cereal character in this beer really kind of makes that subside so it's not too sweet actually. but you've got a big noble hop presence in here as well and that goes around the edge of the tongue. It's a quite earthy hop actually that goes around the back edges and around the front we're getting a little bit more of the grassy and slightly spicy floral aromatic stuff coming out but I'm not picking up too much in the way of fruit out of this. It must just be an unusual element to the aroma. Yeah it's a nice, it's a very kind of full malty flavour this one so you've got a big kind of doughy bread in there but it's almost at the same time it does have a sort of rye bread flavour as well so it, it almost tastes as if you're having two different types of bread at once. It's, it's a nice white doughy bread with a little bit of yeasty character in there too but at the same time you've got a rye-ish bread competing with it. In the middle of the tongue you are getting a little bit of a sweeter slightly biscuity uh, caramelly flavour coming out of this. It's a bit toasted as well, the bread, but you'll notice that the toastiness isn't mixing with the kind of caramel sweetness. It really is the bready flavours that are getting that. But around the edges of the tongue, you're getting the uh, the sort of the, the real earthy hop. The earthy hop in this one is lingering quite a bit, but around the front as you move into the aftertaste, that's when you're getting a bit more of a kind of grassy and maybe a slightly citric uh, flavour in there too but it's not a kind of reddish fruit which I thought it might have been going by the colour of the beer. It is a slightly citrusy fruit that mixes in with the kind of grassy hops but it's a real noble hop character. The earthiness, grassiness, slightly floral aromatic -y kind of thing going on. That's typical of both the Hallertau and the Tetnanger hops actually. But yeah, you'll actually feel in this beer a little bit of a kind of, uh, of a, an oily feel just moving towards the front of the tongue and it does, when you pay attention to that it actually does come out as if it's a little bit more of a, a red fruit but it's not like, it's not figs and it's not plums or raisins or anything sharp like that. It is a very mild slightly reddish fruit aroma. It's not quite strawberry or anything like that. I can't quite put my finger on exactly what fruity character it is but you'll just notice it and it is a slightly reddish fruit character that just comes towards the front of the mouth on a little bubble there and I've seen the American versions of the Alp beers they like to actually bring out that fruit a little bit more so it's a kind of candied fruit maybe that's a, a good way to describe it actually it is a very lightly kind of candied fruit that comes out just on the behind the front of the tongue but then the American versions of this beer as I say that really is a bit more promoted if you like it's a bit more prominent in the flavour but it's a really nice beer this actually and I, I've never I can't remember ever reviewing a classic German Alt beer for you but this is really nice I have to say that so yeah typical bready malt base in there two, two kind of breads as I say 
kind of white doughy bread but at the same time a little bit of yeast sweetness in there and some rye bread there but the earthy hop character around the sides, a little bit of grassy and slightly citricky, uh, aromatic -y fruit hop just around the front curve of the tongue and then a little bit of red fruit and a slightly oily bubble behind the very front there. But in terms of the mouthfeel of this guy, it's a nice mid-bodied beer. The carbonation is very, very smooth and that's a typical thing of quite a lot of German Brauhaus beer. Um, it's very, very nicely done, but it feels a little bit thicker than it probably is just because the carbonation is so smooth. But as I told you, it's got a nice, big, kind of cereally spicy malt base here. There is a little bit of sweetness to it as well, but it's got a good hop character. And it's not that bitter, actually. It's more of a kind of spicy, earthy, and slightly aromatic -y hop character. So it does have a little bit of dryness, and you are getting just a little bit of fruit sweetness too. In the aftertaste, it really is the earthy hop character around the edges of the tongue. The grassiness is there a little bit, but you do have that kind of ryeish bread flavour that lingers in the aftertaste. So overall, it's a really, really nice out beer. And as I told you, this is one of my favourite brew pubs in Germany and I will definitely make the effort to go back. I'm not sure if any of you who are watching this video will have tried the beer before, but if you have, please let me know in the comments section below your own thoughts on it. I hope you've enjoyed this beer review and indeed the whole mini-series of Brauhaus beers that I've done for you over the last five reviews. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. And I will catch you soon with my next beer review. I'll be doing my 400 50th one for you tomorrow so stay tuned for that and there will be more German beers for you because no doubt I will be back there. Prost!